Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and welcome my brothers and sisters to yet another exciting report here on the program of change in the month of change seeds of change and tonight we've been talking about a very important topic a very important part of the life of the believer and that is shyness or modesty the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that all of shyness is good all of shyness is good shyness has many different branches and of those branches is what we're talking about tonight and that is modest dressing it is known that in our religion in the in islam that islam encourages the believer to dress in a modest manner and to be modest in his life and to help us explain about modesty we have a couple of very special guests here with us tonight so bear with us they've come all the way from china to help us explain about modesty let's meet our guests that's right we have two very special guests we have suzy and suzy as you can see uh, she's made in china and suzy is wearing what you would call a modern style hijab these days that a lot of people are wearing throughout the muslim world in many muslim lands that women are wearing this type of hijab and we will discuss this in a moment and our other guest very special guest is fatima and fatima is wearing a little bit more conser conservative clothing uh, she is wearing what we would call the yemeni khimar so welcome to our guests and first of all when we're talking about clothing for women when we're talking about dress dress wear for women we're talking about hijab and one of the one of the misconceptions is that hijab many people think that hijab is just the cloth that is placed on the head covering the hair but that is not correct hijab in its sense means to satir it means to have a barrier between a curtain can be a hijab anything can be a hijab a wall can be a hijab and when we're talking about hijab for the believing woman we're talking about her entire dress not only that it, that is which upon her head but that which covers her and protects her from the onlookers outside that are not from her mahrams so first of all where do we get this hijab from there's a lot of confusion today lots of people say many different things you'll find that some people will say that there's nowhere about hijab in the quran or the sunnah other people will say niqab is compulsory and etc so there's a lot of confusion but there doesn't need to be there doesn't need to be any confusion if we return to the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam things are very clear they become very clear to us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the quran in at least two places in surah an-nur and also in surah al-ahzab verse 59 in surah al-ahzab that a clear revelation from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describing or giving the order for the believing woman to wear the hijab so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in this verse of the Quran for the Prophet ﷺ to tell his wives, his daughters, and the believing women to cast their garments over their bodies when going outdoors. A very clear ayah calling the believing women to wear the hijab and the reason for this verse that was the reason it was revealed is because in the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you can imagine in medina that when you needed to go to the toilet there was no toilets they used to have to go out into the desert and what happened in those days was that the evil doers rapists people who would rape women they would wait and they would be sneaking up and waiting for a beautiful woman to come out of her house and to go to the toilet at night or even in the daytime 
to go out into the uh, desert there to go to the toilet. And when that happened, these people would rape, uh, wait for a woman and pounce upon her. If she looked beautiful, they would pounce upon her and rape her. And of course, that is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for the believing women. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse, the believing women began to wear the hijab. And they were immediately protected. They were protected, and this is one of the miracles from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the hijab is a protection against rape. It is a protection for the woman. And whenever one of these evildoers saw this, or saw a woman wearing this, it was as if they were invisible. They would not, they would not take any notice. But, and they would wait for another girl who came out who was already half naked so they could have their way with her. So this is the reason for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealing this verse in the, in the Qur'an, this ayah. But when we're talking about hijab, brothers and sisters, and I say brothers as well because one day you may be a father and you may have a daughter or you may have a sister. So it is also your responsibility. Hijab is an act of worship. Hijab is an act of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every time, every time, sister, that you cover yourself in the correct way and you leave that house, that every time you are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gaining reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, closer to Allah through your hijab. And every act of worship has conditions. If we look at prayer, prayer has conditions. Fasting, fasting has conditions. You have to start before the Fajr prayer and finish at Maghrib. You can't just fast whenever you like. Also, as hijab is an act of worship, it also has conditions. So let's take a look at the conditions of the hijab. The first condition of the hijab is that it covers the entire body, except for the face and the hands. We've said this Except for the face and the hands, there is different of opinion amongst the scholars whether that is correct. There are those who will say, no, it must cover the entire body, including the face and the hands. And then there are those who will say, except for the face and the hands. We don't want to get into that, uh, that difference of opinion at the moment because it is not the place for that. But we will say it the, uh, the first condition is it must cover the entire body. It must cover the entire body. The second is that the material is not see-through. It is not good enough to have a hijab that you can see the hair underneath or to be wearing a dress that you can see the skin underneath. For this has not met the conditions of hijab. Number three is that it must be loose-fitting. The hijab must be loose-fitting. And the shape of the body must not be apparent. Loose-fitting, not tight. Many today you see people wearing or women wearing tight clothing and you can see the shape of the body this is not acceptable a condition that it must be loose fitting it cannot be tight number four is that there's no decorations upon it to attract the man's eye some of these little decorations that they place these days immediately the man begins begins to look this is another condition that it must not have any de decorations to attract men Number five is that it must not be perfumed. It must not have perfume on it. It is haram and in fact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curses the woman who leaves her house that, and she wears perfume. So the, thob, the, the dress must not have perfume. Also, it must be a thob or it must be a dress that is worn, worn not showing off. When I say not showing off, you cannot buy a unique dress that, and I'm talking about uh, going out, uh, going outside doors, you cannot buy a unique dress that was $150,000 that has some diamonds upon here and this that you're wearing it for showing off. Because whoever wears a thobe or a dress showing off in this life, they will not see it in the afterlife. They will not wear that thobe, a thobe, a beautiful thobe in the afterlife. Number seven is that it must not resemble the clothing of men. It is not permissible for a woman to wear the clothing of men and it is not permissible for a man to wear the clothing of women. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also cursed those people who cross-dress, cross-dressing. 
for this is not permissible in Islam. Number eight, that it must not resemble the dress of the disbelievers. Sp specific dresses. Specific dress for the disbelievers that the, the dress of the believing woman must not resemble this. And the last condition is that it has no crosses or no pictures with souls. When we say pictures with souls, uh, pictures of faces, pictures of anything along those lines that would have a soul in this life can have none of this and no crosses at all. And not only crosses, but other symbols, other symbols that represent other people's religions. It could be a pharaonic symbol. The pharaohs had a religion. So it could be any of those symbols. Any of those symbols is not permissible. And if you cover these nine conditions, then you have yourself a hijab, a hijab that is worshipping, that is helping you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every time you leave your house. Now let's take a look at our two guests. Uh, if we don't mind there, Susie, if we can just start with you. We want to take a look and to see, has Susie met the conditions of hijab? Now, the first condition, we said that it covers the entire body. So let's take a look at Susie's. You can see here that the neck is open. Uh, she has covered most of the body, but the neck is open. So she has to get an X for this. I'm sorry, Susie. The next is that the material is not see-through. Material is not see-through. This is not see-through, but wait a minute. This hijab here is see-through. I can see through it. I can see her head. So she gets another X. I'm sorry, Susie. I'm sorry. The third is that it must be loose-fitting. Loose-fitting. Well, you cannot see. You have to be able to not see the shape of the body. And I'm sorry, but I can see the shape here. And very much I can see the shape on the legs. So we're going to have to give Susie another X. It must not be perfumed. I just excuse you for a minute, uh, Susie. I think there's some perfume on there. I think Susie's put some perfume there. I'm sorry, Susie, but we're going to have to give you another X. Another X. It must not be worn for showing off. This is pretty average clothing, uh, pretty ordinary. And you could wear it in the house for your, for your husband, but not out on the street. Uh, but we could say that she, let's give her a tick for this, that she didn't wear it for, for showing off. It must not resemble the clothing of men. Well, we could say, we could say, and I'm sure there are those who would say that the jeans are the clothing of men, uh, but they are women's jeans. So let's, let's give her a tick for that and say, okay, she's not wearing the clothing of men. Although the way she has tied her hijab, is similar to the way that I have mine tied. So we would ha let's give her a cross. I'm sorry, Susie. We're going to have to give you another X there. I'm sorry about that. Number eight is that it must not resemble the dress of the disbelievers. Well, let's be fair and say that this is not a dress of the disbelievers. And uh, let's give her a tick for this. And it must have not have any souls, uh, sorry, any crosses or any pictures with souls. And she has. She has uh, one with that one, so she has got another tick there. So if we take a look at the account of Susie, we can see that she has many crosses. Even one cross, brothers and sisters, even one X there means that you have not fulfilled the, sh the conditions of hijab. And Susie has lost in many of those conditions. So let's take a look now at our other companion here, our other guest, Fatima. And uh, excuse me there, Fatima, if you don't mind. We take a look here at Fatima. Fatima is wearing what we would call a Yemeni. Uh, a Yemeni is from the south of the, uh, the Arabian Peninsula. And this is a, a black, uh, black khimar on top of a black abaya. Let's go through and see what she has, uh, if she has passed the test of a of a of a hijab that is following the conditions of hijab number one is that it must cover the entire body so if we take a look it is in, it is covering i cannot see any of her body this is great 
she's got a tick for the first one. This is one of the most important ones. The second one is that the material is not see-through. If you don't mind there, Fatima, we'll take a look here. And clearly, we cannot see any skin or any hair upon Fatima. So clearly, she has passed this test, that the material is not see-through. And why I'm on that point, a lot of people say, well, must we wear black? Do we have to wear black? The answer is no. You don't have to wear black. The Sahaba and the, the women of the Sahaba used to wear different colors at times. It is related that Aisha radiallahu anha used to wear yellow or had worn yellow at a time. Why do women wear black? A lot of women like black and black in fact is the lightest material to use that is not see-through. So people often think that black means hot but in fact black means coolness because in able to have a hijab that is not see-through if you were to use white, you would need to use a very thick material because white is a, is a very see-through material. But black, as you can see, this is a very thin material and it is not see-through. So that is why a lot of people wear black. But it is not compulsory to wear black. And I repeat that. The, th the next one is that it's loose-fitting. Let's take a look at Fatima, loose-fitting. If we take a look here, we cannot see the shape of Fatima's body at all, not her legs not her breasts, nothing. So this is clearly, she has passed the test on number three. Number four, that it has no decorations upon it attracting men. Some of those shiny little butterflies that they put on and the man's walking and, whoa, does this have any of them? No, it doesn't. So she's got another tick. The next is that it must not be perfumed. So I just, if I can have your permission there, Fatima, Alhamdulillah, Fatima has, has not put any perfume upon her dress. So she has passed this one. It also must not be worn for showing off. And it doesn't look like it, but this is something also that can be based on your intention. It can be with your intention. Sometimes when a woman puts on a, a dress like this, she might feel that she's better than other women. And when she does that, she begins to wear it for showing off. So be very careful of your intention. When you're wearing a dress like this, wear it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing else. So we'll give her a tick for, uh, we cannot judge her intention, but let's say that she has not done it to show off. So we'll give her a tick for that one. Number seven is that it must not resemble the, the clothing of men, and I'm pretty sure she's passed on that one. It must not resemble the dress of the disbelievers. Well, I haven't seen too many disbelievers wearing this dress, so she's passed on this one, and it must not have any crosses or pictures uh, that contain souls upon it. And if we had take a look, there's no crosses on there, and there's no pictures. So clearly, our guest Fatima has passed the test, and unfortunately for Susie, Susie, we're going to have to make some changes. Susie has lost in many areas. She has not covered the whole body. Uh, her area, her clothing is tight. Even it's see-through. Even it was perfumed. So there's many areas that we need to work on with Susie. And if any of us, if any of uh, believing sisters out there can see themselves in this condition, then we need to make a change. We need to make a real change in our lives. And the best time to make that change is now. Don't wait. Make that change for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you, when you leave your house, you will be gaining rewards just by the way you dress. Reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hijab, sisters, wallahi, hijab, you, you have a very great opportunity for sisters out there to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by wearing the correct dress. And when you leave your house, that you know that you're doing something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're being rewarded for every, every, every step that you take. You're being rewarded every second that you are out there. You're being rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the dress that you wear. How can we fix up uh, Susie? Well, Susie, I think the best way that we can fix her up for now and Susie needs to make some serious changes in her life, the best way is that we take this here and we will quickly
place this upon Susie. There you go, Susie. And this is a khimar. This is called a khimar in Arabic. And now Susie has, she's passing many, many of the tests. We still have to get a, uh, a skirt or a, a, a lower dress or an underdress that is not tight for Susie. But this is a lot better. And just to give you an example, just how dangerous it is, sisters out there, to wear this tight clothing that there is a hadith from the Prophet ﷺ that your prayer will not be accepted unless you are wearing a khimar. And this is a khimar. So this is the, when we're talking about, we're talking about the least amount of clothing that you have to wear is this when you are praying. If you were to pray in the condition that Susie was in before, then unfortunately you have not even met the conditions of prayer. One of the conditions of your prayer is that you wear something that is loose, something that is a khimar. And this is a khimar. They, we do have ones that are longer that go down past the legs. And this is great. And these are quite comfortable, I have heard. I haven't tried them on. But I have heard by my wife and other women that this, that this type of dress is very comfortable. And this is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the most important thing. So I thank our guests for coming along. Uh, Fatima and also Susie and congratulations Fatima may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, continue to give you rewards every time you leave sisters out there and fathers and brothers take notice of what we have done today take notice of what we have learnt and begin to put it into practice now let's plant the seeds the seeds of change of our new life our new life Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the right way. Getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sisters, wallahi, you have the best opportunity. The best opportunity to get rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just by obeying this hijab and walking out in the street and you will be gaining rewards, getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let's all try and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially now in this time of year when the, the gates of paradise are open. The gates of paradise are open. So let's make that change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.